The Woman at the Well Jesus and his disciples left Judea and returned to Galilee. The trip took them through Samaria. After a time they came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat down beside the well for rest. The disciples ventured off to look for provisions. It was about noon, and before long, a Samaritan woman came to the well to draw water. Jesus said to her, Would you please draw some water for me so I could have a drink? The woman was surprised, for Jews usually refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. I can't believe you just spoke to me. A Jew would even speak to a woman like me, much less asking for me for a drink of water. If only you knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to. Because if you did, you would ask me and I would give you living water. Sir, you sit by this deep well, a thirsty man without a bucket in sight. Where would you get this living water? Do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob, who laboured long and hard to dig and maintain this well, for, to give clean water for his children, his sons, his daughters, grandchildren, and his livestock. How can you offer better water than he offered his family? Drink this water and your thirst is only quenched for a moment. You must return to this well again and again. But the water I offer you is different. I offer you water that quenches thirst forever. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within you, giving life throughout eternity. You will never be thirsty again. Please, sir, give me this water, then I will never be thirsty again, and I won't have to keep coming to this well to get water. Then go and get your husband. Um, I have no husband, sir. Indeed, you are telling the truth. You've had five husbands and are currently living with a man you're not married to. Sir, it is obvious that you are a prophet. So tell me, why is that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place to worship, while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Jerusalem where our ancestors worshipped? Woman, I tell you that neither is true. The time is coming when it no longer will matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. Believe this, a new day is coming. In fact, it's already here. When the importance will not be placed on the time and wor place of worship, but on the truthful hearts of the worshippers. You worship what you don't know, while we worship what we do know, for God's salvation is coming through the Jews. The Father is spirit, and he is seeking followers whose worship is sourced in truth and deeply spiritual as well. Regardless of whether you're in Jerusalem or on this mountain, if you do not seek the Father, then you do not worship. I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Verily I say unto you, I am the Messiah. Just then his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her? Or why are you talking to her? The woman went back to the town, leaving her water pot behind. She stopped men and women on the streets and told them about what had happened. And because of her testimony, the village of Sychar was transformed. Many Samaritans heard and believed. They approached Jesus and repeatedly invited him to stay with them. So he lingered there for two days on their account. And as he spoke to them, many more came to believe. They began their faith journey because of the testimony of the woman at the well. But when they heard for themselves, they were convinced that Jesus was God's anointed, the Saviour sent to rescue the entire world.